And welcome back to Universal Nightmare. As the health care debate rages on in Washington, one possible provision of the Democrats' plan hasn't been getting much attention at all. Now let's take a look at the new government bureaucracy that could have the power to change your life forever. There is a little talked about provision in the Democrats' health care plan that may shock you. If approved, this bill could force millions of Americans to join a government-run HMO and abandon their current health care. An even more frightening aspect of the legislation is that a nameless, faceless board would decide what health benefits you are eligible to receive. This body would determine the quality of medical care that you receive in almost all areas, including both maternity and pediatric care. Democrats argue that you'll still be able to access treatment not covered under the definition of, quote, essential health benefits, but in those cases, you'd be paying out of your pocket for those services. For the most part, important health care decisions will be taken away from trusted physicians and then given to a group of government bureaucrats whose mandate would be to cut costs, not to save lives. Many of President Obama's closest advisors advocate cost-cutting. Dr. Ezekiel Emanuel, brother of Ram Rambo, and a health care policy advisor for the White House, has praised England's model of health care rationing. Now, in that system, doctors actually take into account the life expectancy of a patient to determine if a treatment is cost-effective. Another presidential aide, Dr. David Blumenthal, has said, quote, government controls are the proven strategy for controlling health care expenditures. So should Americans be penalized for receiving medical care they themselves deem necessary? And should the citizens of this country put their lives in the hands of an unelected board operating in the shadows? That could happen and happen soon. And joining me now is patient advocate and founder and chairman of the Committee to Reduce Infection Deaths, Dr. Betsy McCoy. All right, now I want you to explain these two big mass... This right. is the House Tri-Committee Bill. All right, hang on This is second. the Kennedy Bill making its oh way through the Senate. Gosh. Right. All right. Oh. All right, so this is the Kennedy bill over here that yes. you got, these, and this is the House this the is the tri committee House version, bill. Right, these are going to be melded together at Hang some on a point. Second. But this is what Congress never reads. Okay, go ahead. But what's really important to yeah. know about these bills is mm -hmm. that they are not about covering the uninsured. They are about forcing everyone into budget-grade HMOs and giving government the power to limit your health care even though you or your employer is paying for the whole plan. In both bills, in the Kennedy bill and in the House bill, uh, Kennedy bill page 62, House bill page 37, uh, a, an appointed commission will decide all the specifics, how much the plans will cost, what they will cover, but most importantly, what the limits will be on the care. Isn't that the equivalent of Great Britain's government rationing body, or well, seemingly? Well, certainly, in the letter of the law, it appears to be that way. Mm -hmm. And I'm particularly concerned about the role that these advisors will play. All right, let, let, let me ask you this, because we now have a history where it doesn't matter if it's cap and trade or the stimulus bill, you know, look Look at the size of this thing. The, the, literally, congressmen and senators are voting on bills that they don't read. And they've exempted right. themselves well, and the I president give you and some federal props employees. Here. You have read the, uh, I guess, Light Sunday reading for you, but you have read every page of both of these bills. Yes, I have. All right. What else have you gleaned from this that would may shock the senses of, of, of the average American well, that maybe thinks, all right, I want the government to provide this for me? Well, first of all, most of the spending in these bills is in the back half of each bill. It's not just to cover the uninsured hundreds of billions of dollars allocated to other types of programs. So when you hear the urgency of covering the uninsured, we could probably do that for between 28 and 49 billion dollars a year, depending on the kind of coverage we offered. It doesn't have to be 1.6 trillion, mm -hmm. and most importantly, it doesn't have to limit the care that people who already have insurance can get. How about what I have advocated for a long time, and that's medical individual medical savings accounts for every individual which would guarantee cat would, uh, catastrophic care everyone would yes. be in case of catastrophic illness it would also mandate or or encourage or entice people to get a checkup every year so they that we can catch things earlier which would help save in, in the cost of health care most importantly it would yeah. put the decision making in back. your hands and that would be right. the next thing very important do you support that yes one of the yeah. most dangerous 
misconceptions driving this legislation mm. is the idea, which you hear the president say often, that mm. we have to shift the resources from treating the sick to keeping people well. Well, the fact is, that it, and, the, and the president said to the AMA, cancer, heart disease, lung diseases, stroke, diabetes are all preventable. Well, they're not. And no. neither is Alzheimer's or MS or cerebral palsy mm. or so many other diseases that are linked to genetics or unknown causes. Right now, 5% percent of patients need 50 percent of health care resources and Sean that is not going to change as long as we look after the sick that's and that's what families really have to be aware of in these bills that these are plans these are health care for the healthy but when you're sick it's not, it's not going to be there when you need it that's right and that's um, my concern well it's very impressive by the way ladies and gentlemen unlike your congressman and your senator somebody actually read a bill before it happens this is a nightmare and we're calling it Universal Nightmare. Thank you, uh, uh, Betsy McCoy. Thanks for being with us. Appreciate it. Very informative.